you're waiting for something to happen, doesn't it? Funny thing is, time can pass very short or very fast, and sometimes even both at once. The time now, oh, a little after four, but what that means should depend on you. Too often, we do something simply because time tells us to. Time for school, time for bed, whoops, 12 o'clock, time to be hungry. It can get a little silly, don't you think? Time is important, but it's what you do with it that makes it so. So my advice to you is to keep it. Keep your eyes open and your ears perked. Otherwise, it'll pass before you know it, and you certainly will have missed something. Things have a habit of doing that, you know. Being here one minute and gone the next. In the twinkling of an eye, in a jiffy, in a flash. Why, I know of a girl once who yawned and missed a whole summer vacation. Or what about the caveman who took a nap one afternoon to wake up and find himself completely alone? You see, while he was asleep, someone else had come along and invented the wheel, and everyone had moved to the suburbs. And then, of course, there is Milo, who never seems to know what to do with himself. Not just sometimes, but always. When he's in school, he wants to be out, and when he's out, he wants to be in. Wherever he is, he wants to be somewhere else. And when he gets there, so what? Everything is too much trouble or a waste of time. Books, he's already read them. Games, boring. TV, dumb. So what's left? Another long, boring afternoon. Unless he bothers to notice a very large package which happened to arrive today. For Milo, who has plenty of time. Well, that's true. No. Well. One genuine turnpike toll booth, easily assembled at home for use by those who have never traveled in lands beyond. Beyond what? This package contains the following items. One genuine turnpike toll booth to be erected according to the directions. Three precautionary signs to be used in a precautionary fashion. Assorted coins for paying tolls. One map, strictly up to date, showing how to get from here to there. One book of rules and traffic regulations, which may not be bent or broken. Warning, results are not guaranteed. If not perfectly satisfied, your waste of time will be refunded. Come off it. Who do you think you're kidding? What am I supposed to do with this? Well, what else do I have to do? Have your destination in mind. Dictionopolis, that's a funny name. Might as well go there. See what I mean? You never know how things are going to get started. But when you're bored, the thing you need most is a rude awakening. Information, predictions, and advice cheerfully offered. Park here and blow horn. My, 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 my. Welcome, 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 welcome to the land of expectations, expectations, expectations. Well, we don't get many travelers these days, so we certainly don't get many travelers. Now, what can I do for you? I'm the weatherman. Uh, 
this the right road to Diction Office? Well now, well now, well now, I don't know of any wrong road to Dictionopolis, so if this road goes to Dictionopolis at all, it must be the right road, and if it doesn't, it must be the right road to somewhere else, because there are no wrong roads to anywhere. Do you think it will rain? I thought you said you were the weatherman. Oh no, I'm the weatherman, not the weatherman. After all, it's more important to know whether there will be weather than what the weather will be. What kind of place is expectation? Good question. Good question. Expectations is the place you must always go to before you get to where you're going. Of course, some people never go beyond expectations, but it's my job to hurry them along whether they like it or not. Now, what else can I do for you? Uh, I think I can find my own way. Splendid, splendid, splendid. Whether or not you find your own way, you're bound to find some way. If you happen to find my way, please return it. I lost it years ago. I, I imagine it must be quite rusty by now. You did say it was going to rain, didn't you? Well, I'm glad you made your own decision. I do so hate to make up my mind about anything, whether it's good or bad, up or down, rain or shine. Expect everything, I always say, and the unexpected never happens. Goodbye. I've got to get out of here fast. Talking to a guy like that all day would get me nowhere for sure. Oh, now what? Now I really am getting nowhere. I hope I didn't take a wrong turn. I wonder where I am. You're in the doldrums. Yes, that's a little jump. allowed to think <sighs> in the dull drums. Don't you have a rule book? It's local ordinance 1753-89-J. Ordinance 1753-89-J. It shall be unlawful, illegal, and unethical to think, think of thinking, surmise, presume, reason, meditate, or speculate while in the doldrums. Anyone breaking this law shall be severely punished. <laughs> That's a ridiculous law. Everybody thinks. We don't. And the most of the time, you don't. That's why you're here. You weren't thinking, and you weren't paying attention either. People who don't pay attention often get stuck in the doldrums. Face it, most of the time, you're just like us. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that once, and laughing is against the law. Don't you have a rule book? It's local ordinance 547381-W. While in the doldrums, laughing is frowned upon, and smiling is only permitted on alternate Thursdays. Well, if you can't laugh or think, what can you do? Anything, as long as it's nothing. Mm -hmm. And everything, as long as it isn't anything. <sighs> There's lots to do. We have a very busy schedule. At 8 o'clock, we get up, and then we spend uh, from 8 to 9 daydreaming. From 9 to 9.30, we take our early mid-morning nap. From 9.30 to 10.30, we dawdle and delay. From 10.30 to 11.30, we take our late, early morning nap. From 11.30, Eat our lunch. From one to two, we linger and loiter. 
From 2 to 2.30, we take our early afternoon nap. From 2.30 to 3.30, we put off our tomorrow that we could have done today. From 3.30 to 4, we take our early, late afternoon nap. From 4 to 5, we loaf and lounge until dinner. From 6 to 7, we dilly dally. From 7 to 8, we take our early evening nap. And then an hour before we go to bed, we waste time. You see, it's really quite strenuous doing nothing all day long. So once a week, we take a holiday and go nowhere. Which is just where we were about to go when you came along. Would you care to join us? That seems to be where I'm going anyway. Tell me. Does everyone in the doldrums do nothing? Yes, everyone. But that awful watchdog. He's always sniffing around to make sure that no one wastes time. Quite unpleasant character. The watchdog? The watchdog! Oh no, anyway. Don't you have anywhere to go? Well, I was on my way to this place called Dictionopolis when I got stuck here. Can you help me? Help you? You've got to help yourself. I suppose you know why you got stuck. Well, I guess I just wasn't thinking. Precisely. Now you're on your way. I am? Of course. Since you got here by not thinking, it seems reasonable that in order to get out, you must start thinking. You mind if I get in? I like automobile rides. Well? Uh, all right, I'll try. Are we moving? Not yet. Think harder. I'm thinking as hard as I can. But think just a little bit harder than that. Come on, you can do it. I'm thinking of all the planets in the solar system, all the ones that begin with Q, how water expands when it freezes. We're moving, we're moving. Keep thinking how a steam engine works, how to bake a pie, the difference between centigrade and Fahrenheit. Dictionopolis, here we come. Hey, watchdog, you coming along? You can call me talking. Keep your ass on the road. Well, what kind of place is Dictionopolis anyway? It's where all the words in the world come from. It, it used to be a marvelous place, but ever since Rhyme and Reason left, it hasn't been the same. Rhyme and Reason? The two princesses. They used to settle all the arguments between their two brothers who rule over the land of wisdom. You see, Azaz is the king of Dictionopolis, and the mathematician is the king of Digitopolis, and they almost never see eye to eye on anything. It was a job of sweet rhyme and pure reason to settle all the arguments between the two kings, and usually did so well that both sides left feeling pretty satisfied. That is, until one day, the kings had an argument to end all arguments. Please. 
after careful consideration of the problems set before us by King Azaz of Dictionopolis and the mathematician of Digitopolis, we have come to the following conclusion. Words and numbers are of equal value in the cloak of knowledge. One is the warp and the other is the woof. It is no more important to count the sands than it is to name the stars. Therefore, let both kingdoms, Dictionopolis and Digitopolis, live in peace. Boo is what I say. Boo and ba and hiss. What good are these girls if they can't even settle an argument in anyone's favor? I think I've come to a decision of my own. So have I. You, you are, are hereby here banished from this land to the castle in the air. And as for you, keep out of my way! Ever since, there's been neither rhyme nor reason in the kingdom. Words are misused and numbers are mismanaged. The argument has divided both kingdoms, and the value of both words and numbers has been forgotten. What a waste. Why doesn't someone just rescue the princesses and set everything straight again? Now, that is easier said than done. Castle in the air is very far from here, and the one path that leads up to it is guarded by ferocious demons. But, hold on, here we are. <coughs> Welcome to Dictionopolis, a happy place, located in the foothills of confusion and caressed by the gentle waves from the sea of knowledge. Today, by royal proclamation, is market day. Have you come for a reason? Uh, I beg your pardon? By yourself, by yourself. Which is it? You must have come for a reason. Well, I... Oh, come on now. You must have an explanation or certainly an excuse. Uh, no. Very serious, very serious indeed. You can't get in without a reason. Wait a minute. I think I may have an old one you can use. What's he looking for? Oh, this will do. Why not? A good reason for anything. A bit used, perhaps, but still quite serviceable. There you go, sir. Now I can truly say, welcome to Dictionopolis. words for sale, enhance your vocabulary, and enrich your speech with, with such elegant words as quagmire, flabbergast, and upholstery. Words by the bag! Get them over here! Words by the bag for a more talkative customer, a pound of happies at a very reasonable price. Always handy for happy birthday, happy new year. Happy days, or happy go lucky, or how about a package of goods? Always useful for good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and goodbye. I can't believe it. Have you ever seen so many words? Uh, they're fine if you have something to say. Excuse me, sir. What are those? Oh, these are for people who like to make their own words. You can pick any assortment or buy a special book with all the instructions. Here, taste an egg. It's sweet. I knew you'd like it. A is one of our best sellers. Not all of them are that good, you know. The Z, for instance, very dry and sawdusty. And the X tastes like a trunk full of stale air. But not all of them are that bad. Here, taste an I. Cool. It tastes icy. Oh, and here's a Z for you. It's as crunchy as a bone. See, some people are too lazy to make their own words, but take it from me, and not only is it smarter, but it's also delightful, elating, and extremely useful. But isn't it difficult? I'm not very good at making words. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. A-S-S-I-S-T-A-N-C-E. Don't be alarmed. A-L-A-R-M-E. I'm the spelling. I can spell anything. Anything. A-N-Y-T-H-I-N-G. Try me, try me. Can you spell goodbye? <laughs> Perhaps you are under the misapprehension. M-I-S-A-P-P-R-E-H-E-N-S-I-O-N that I am dangerous. 
Let me assure you that I'm quite peaceful. Now, think of the most difficult word you can, and I'll spell it. Uh, uh okay. How about curiosity? Let's see now. How much time do I have? Uh, just ten seconds. Cut them off, talk. Ten. Nine. Oh, dear. Eight. Oh, dear. Seven. Uh, six. Five. Four. Three. C-U-R-I-O-S-I-T-Y. Correct. Can you spell anything? Just about. You see, years ago, I was an ordinary bee, mining mountains, smelling flowers all day, occasionally picking up part-time work in people's bonnets. And then one day I realized I never amount to anything without an education. So I decided that I Balderdash. Would... Let me repeat, Balderdash. Well, well, what have we here? Isn't someone going to introduce me to the little boy? This is the humbug. You can't trust a word he says. Nonsense. Everyone can trust the humbug. As I was saying to the king just the other day. But you have never met the king. Don't believe a thing he tells you. Bosh, my boy. Pure bosh. The humbugs are an old and noble family, honorable to the core. Why we fought in the crusade with Richard the Lionheart, crossed the Atlantic with Columbus, blazed trails with the pioneers. History is full of humbugs. A very pretty speech, S-P-E-E-C-H. Now why don't you go away? I was just advising the lad of the importance of proper spelling. Bah, as soon as you learn to spell one word, they ask you to spell another. You can never catch up, so why bother? Take it from me, boy, and forget all about it. As my great-great-great-grandfather, George Washington Humbug, used to say, You, sir, are an imposter. I-N-P-O-S-T-E-R. You can't even spell his own name. What? You dared out my word. The word of a humbug. The word of a humbug with direct access to the ear of a king. And the king shall hear this, I promise you. Did someone call for a king? Did you mention the monarch? Speak of the sovereign and treat the emperor. Hail his highness. Who are they? The king's advisors, or in more formal terms, his cabinet. Great salutations. Welcome. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, hi. <clears throat> By the order of Zassiana Bridge, King of Dictionopolis, Monarch of Letters, Emperor of Phrases, Sentences, and Miscellaneous Figures of Speech, we offer you the hospitality of our kingdom, country, nation, state, commonwealth, realm, empire, palatinate, principality. Do all those words mean the same thing? Of course. Certainly. Precisely. Exactly. Yes. Then why not just use one? Wouldn't that make a lot more sense? Nonsense. Ridiculous. Fantastic. Absurd. <laughs> Bosh! I'm not interested in making sense. It's not a joke. Besides, one word is as good as another, so why not use them all? Then you don't have to choose which one is right. Besides, if one word is right, ten or ten times is right. Obviously, you don't know who we are. Dick of definition. The minister of meaning. Earl of essence. The count of connotation. The undersecretary of understanding. And we have come to invite you to the royal banquet. The banquet? That's quite an honor, my boy. A real H-O-N-O-R. Don't be ridiculous. Everybody goes to the royal banquet these days. True, everybody does, though. But some people are invited, while others simply push their way in where they aren't wanted. How dare you, you buzzing little upstart. I'll show you who's not wanted. You watch, and I'm warning you. W-A-R-S-I-N-G. Now, my boy, what can you do to entertain us? 
sing songs, do tumbling tricks, tell stories. Which is it? I can't do any of those things. What an ordinary little boy. Can't you do anything at all? Well, I can count to a thousand. Never mention numbers here. We only use numbers when we absolutely have to. Now, let's change the subject and have dinner. Since you are the guest of honor, you may pick the menu. Me? Well, I'm not very hungry, so can we just have a light snack? A light snack it is. Not a very substantial meal. Maybe you can suggest something a little more filling. Oh, okay. Well then, I think we ought, we ought to have a square meal. A square meal it shall be. Why not? 
Why not indeed? It's much too difficult. Of course, of course. Much too difficult. You could if you really wanted to. Indeed. If you really wanted to, you could. How? Yeah, how? Uh, well, it's a simple task for a brave boy with a stout heart, a steadfast dog, and a serviceable small automobile. Go on. Well, all he would have to do is cross the unknown countryside in between here and Digitopolis, where he would have to convince the math magician to the release of the princesses, which we know to be impossible, because the math magician will never agree with his ass about anything. <laughs> After that, it's a simple matter of entering the mountains of ignorance, from which no man has ever returned alive. A simple climb up a 2,000 foot stairway with no railings, in a high wind, to the castle in the air. After a pleasant chat with the princesses, it's a simple drive back down those chaotic crags, where the demons of ignorance have sworn to tear any intruder limb from limb and devour him down to his belt buckle. After that, a triumphal parade, if, of course, there's anything left to parade followed by hot chocolate and cookies for everyone. I never realized it would be so simple. Th th that sounds dangerous to me. And just who is supposed to make this journey? Ah, yes, but there is one far more serious problem. What is it? I'm afraid I can't tell you until you return. Hey, hey, but, but wait a minute, I didn't get to Dictionopolis will always be grateful to you, my boy, and your dog. <laughs> now, just a moment, sire. Your journey may be hard, but fear not, for I can give you something to help. In this box are all the letters of the alphabet. With them, you can form any word. All you must do is use them well and in the right places. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> and we need a companion, since he knows the obstacles so well. The humbug has cheerfully volunteered to accompany you. Now see here. <clears throat> you will find him great, dependable, loyal, and resourceful. Your Majesty. I'm sure he'll be a great help. I hope so. We're going to need it. Good luck, and drive carefully. Something terrible. I just know it. Something dreadful is going to happen to us. I can feel it in my bones. That's where the noise was coming from. I'm sure of it. Well, go on. Go on what? Go on and see what's making all that noise. You can't just ignore a creature like that. A creature? What creature? Do you think he's dangerous? Go on, my lord. We'll be right behind you. Well, okay. Maybe he can tell us how much further it is to Digitopolis. Have you ever heard a whole set of dishes fall into the floor from the ceiling? Have you ever heard an ant wearing fur slippers walk across a thick wool carpet? Have you ever heard an octopus, blindfolded, unwrapping a cellophane-covered bathtub? <clears throat> I knew it. None of you looks well at all. <laughs> Not at all. But who would want to hear all those horrible noises? Everyone does these days. Why, I have so many orders for noise pills, Racket lotion, clamor cell, hubbub tonic, that I can hardly keep up. There used to be a time when everybody just wanted to hear beautiful noises, but after the cities were built, there was a great need for clanging bells, trains, whistles, and all those other noises we hear so much today. Be ready in just a moment. Just what kind of doctor are you? You might say I'm a specialist, 
I specialize in noises, from the loudest to the softest, from the terribly unpleasant to just annoying. I'd rather not. But you I, don't need to hear those beautiful noises anymore. I don't want to be cured of beautiful sounds. Besides, there's no such sickness as a lack of noise. Yes, that's what makes it so difficult to cure. Well, it's all the same to you. I'll just give some to Din for his lunch. Ah, oh, that was good, Master. I, I thought you'd never, never let me out. It, it was really cramped in there. <laughs> this is my assistant. We all come in. What's a din? You mean you've never heard of the awful din before? When you're making a lot of noise in the room, what do they tell you to stop? Is that awful din? Right. And when your neighbors are playing their radio loud at night and you wish they'd turn it down. What do you, what would you call it? The awful dip. And when there are repairs going on on your street and the drills have been working all day, what do you wish they'd stop? The dreadful row. The, the dreadful, dreadful row, row of my, my grandfather. grandfather. He perished in the great silence epidemic, epidemic of 1712. I certainly can't understand, understand why you don't like noise. Why, I heard, I heard an explosion last week that was so lovely, I drove with three kicks for two days. Mm. See, noise is the most important thing in the world. But King is as his words are. Nonsense! Well, when a baby wants food, how does she ask? He screams! And when a race car wants gas? It jumps! And how about the dawn when a new day begins? It, it breaks! You see? Noise is all around you, and it's just that simple. Uh, we're going to Digitopolis. Do you know how to get there? I don't. Uh, we're going on our collection rounds next, and I need the den to help me as well. Once a day, I travel throughout the, the kingdom, kingdom and collect all the wonderfully horrible and beautifully unpleasant sounds I can find and bring them back to the doctor to use in his medicine. Although, I think I have something that can help you. It's something that the gin brought home by mistake, and I have no use for it. Here. What is it? It's the sound of laughter. Ugh. All those giggles and squeaks and happy shouts of joy. I don't understand why anyone would want to hear them. They're the worst noises in the world. Keep it for yourself or give it to the princesses when you find them. I don't mind. Are there any ways that we would know we're on the right way to Digitopolis? Um, go to the fork in the road and there should be somebody to help you there. Or not. 
Yes. Indeed, indeed it does. Certainly. My yes. It does make a difference. My angels are many. My sides are not few. I'm the dodecahedron. And who are you? What's a dodecahedron? See for yourself. A dodecahedron is a mathematical shape of well I usually just use one at a time. It saves wear and tear. What are you called? My love. That's an odd name. And you only have one face. Is that a bad thing? You'll soon wear it out using it for everything. Is everyone with one face called Milo? Oh, no. Some are called Billy or Jeffrey or Sally or Lisa. There are lots of other things. How confusing. Here, everything is called exactly what it is. The triangles are called triangles, the circles are called circles, and even the same numbers have the same name. Could you imagine what would happen? If we named all the twos Billy or Sally or Jeffrey or Lisa or lots of other things? You'd have to say Robert plus John equals four, and if the fours were named Albert, things would be hopeless. I never thought of it that way. Then I suggest you begin at once. We're in Digitopolis. Everything is quite precise. Then perhaps you can help us decide which road we should take. By all means, there is nothing to it. Now, if a small car carrying three people traveling 30 miles an hour Along the road five miles long at 11.35 in the morning. Started at the same time as three people in a little automobile. Going 20 miles an hour for 15 minutes on another road exactly twice as long as half the distance of the other. While a dog, a bug, and a boy travel an equal distance in the same time. Or a set equal time in the same distance on a third road. In mid-October, and which way will get you there sooner? And, and which, which is the, the best, best way to go? go? 17? I'm not sure, but you'll have to do better than that. I'm not very good at problems. What a shame. They're so very useful. Why did you know that a, that a beaver two feet long, with a tail a foot and a half long, could build a dam 12 feet high and 6 feet wide in only two days? Then all you would need to build Boulder Dam is a beaver 68 feet long with a 51 foot tail. Where would you find a beaver that big? I don't know, but if you did, you'd certainly know what to do with him. That's crazy. There may be two, but it's completely accurate. If the answer is right, who cares if the question's wrong? All three roads would arrive at the same place at the same time. Correct. Correct. And, and I'll, I'll take, take you there, there myself. myself. But if all the roads arrive at the same place at the same time, then aren't they all really the right road? Certainly not. They're all the wrong road. Just because you have a choice doesn't mean that any one of them has to be right. That's the way to do Topolis, and we'll be there any moment. In fact, we're here. Welcome to the land of numbers. It doesn't look very inviting. Oh, this is the place where numbers are made. If they're not made, you have to dig for them. Don't you know anything at all about numbers? Well, I never really thought that they're very important. Not important? Could you have T for two without the two? Or three blind mice without the three? And how could you seal the seven seeds without the seven? All I meant was- If you had high hopes up, would you know how high they were? And did you know that narrow escapes come in different widths? Would you travel the whole world wide without ever knowing how wide it was? And how could you do anything at long last without knowing how long the last was? Why numbers are the most useful thing in the world? Just follow me and I'll show you. Come, come along, come, come along. along. I, I can't, can't wait, wait for you all day. Put this on. Where are we going? We're here. This is the numbers line. Right this way and watch your step. Whose mind is it? By the 4,827,659 hairs on my head. It's mine, of course. It's a very lovely mine. <laughs> really, it is. The biggest number mine in the kingdom. Are there any precious stones in it? Precious stones? For the 8,247,312 threads in my jacket, I'll say there are. Look here. But this is a five. Exactly. As valuable as jewels you find anywhere. Look at some of the others. We dig them and polish them right here and then send them all over the world. Marvelous, aren't they? They're beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry about that. We use the broken ones for fractions. How about some lunch? Well, that looks delicious. Perhaps you care for something to eat? Oh, yes, sir. thank you. Delicious.
something strange. <coughs> Each one of you makes me a little hungrier than before. Do you have some more?
You see, what bothers me is that, well, even when things seem to be correct, they don't really seem to be right at all. How true. It's been that way ever since Rhyme and Reason were banished. And it's all because that stubborn wretch is ass. It's all his fault. But maybe if you just tried reasoning with him. He's just too unreasonable. Like just the other month, I sent a very friendly letter, which he never had the courtesy to answer. Here, see for yourself. Oh, but uh, maybe he doesn't understand numbers. Nonsense. Everybody understands numbers. No matter what language you speak, they're always the same. A seven is a seven everywhere in the world. Everyone is so sensitive about what he knows best. With your permission, sir, we'd like to rescue Rhyme and Reason. Has his dad agreed to it? Yes, sir. Then I don't. Ever since they've been banished, we've never agreed on anything, and we never will. Never? Never. And if you can prove so otherwise, you have my permission to go. So... When, whenever Azaz disagrees, you agree. Correct. And with whatever Azaz agrees, you disagree. Also correct. So then each of you will agree that he will disagree with whatever each of you are agreeing on. And if you're disagreeing on the same thing, then aren't you really in agreement? I've been tricked. Now may we go? It's a long and dangerous journey. Long before you find them, the demons will know you're there. And if you ever come face to face with them, it'll be too late. But there is one far more serious obstacle than that. What is it? I'm afraid I can't tell you until you return. But maybe I can give you something to help you out. Here's your own magic staff. Use it wisely and there's nothing it can't do for you. But that's nothing but a big pencil. True enough, but once you learn to use it, there's nothing it can't do for you. Are you sure you can't tell us about that serious obstacle? Only when you return. And now, the dodecahedron will escort you to the road that leads to the castle in the air. Farewell, my friends, and good luck to you. Good luck to you. Because they're sure going to need it. Well, off they go. So I see. Well, what is it? I was just wondering myself, your membership. What actually is the serious obstacle you're talking about? You mean, you really don't know. I'm worried sick, I must confess. I wonder if they'll have success. All the others trying in vain, and we're never seeing or heard again. Now, Ryan, Milo, Talk, and Humbug have just as good a chance of succeeding as they do as failing. But the demons are so deadly smart. They'll stuff your brain and fill your heart with petty thoughts and selfish dreams and trap you with their nasty schemes. Now, Ryan, Milo's learned a lot from his journey, and he might just be a match for those demons. And you soon might be knocking on our door. Now cheer up, won't you? I'll try. I have 
properties, tweezers. Next, I would like to empty this well and fill the other, but I don't have a bucket, so you have to use this eyedropper. And lastly, I would like to have a hole in this clip, and here's the needle to dig it. You know something? I've been working steadily for a long time now, and I don't feel the least bit tired or hungry. I could go right on the right on the same way forever. Maybe you will. Well, I wish I knew how long this was going to take. Why don't you use that magic staff of yours to find out? The, uh, the overbearing know-it-all? 
And look there, the triple demons have compromised. Hurry up, you two. Must you be so slow about everything? This is my one. Splendid, splendid. I haven't had an M in ages. What do you want our names for? We're sort of in a hurry. Oh, this won't take long. I'm the official census taker, and I must have some information before I can take your census. Now, if you'll just tell me when you were born, where you were born, why you were you born, how old are you now, how old are you then, I how wish you had been a little while. I wish you'd hurry up. At this rate, the demons will be here before we know it. Your mother's name, your father's name, the places you've lived, the schools you've attended, the schools you haven't attended. I'm getting writer's cramp. I'm smelling something very evil, and it's getting stronger every second. May we go now? Just as soon as you tell me your height, <sighs> your weight, the number of books you've read. We have to go! All right, all right. I'll give you the short part. Destination. But we have Destination. The, the castle in the air. Well, I'm sure you'd like to see what I have to show you. A circus of your very own. And would you like the smell of this wonderful smell? And this is something I know you'll enjoy hearing. No, just sit back. Let the demon catch up. Applause is gone. I warned you I was the census taker. I'll take your sense of purpose, your sense of duty, and destroy your sense of proportion. But there's one thing I'll be helpless yet. What is it? As long as you have the sound of laughter, I cannot take your sense of humor. Oh, that horrible sense of humor. Oh, let's get out of here. And don't look back. Just keep going. Demons are close behind. We have to leave as soon as possible. We're ready, ready anytime you, you are. are. Good, good. Now, if you just come out. Hey, there's no door. How are we supposed to rescue you from the castle of the air? There's no way in or out. Take the time, Milo, and think about it. All right, give me a minute. Hurry up, Milo. <sighs> I've got it. Where's the bunch of presents? Oh, I've got it. E-N-T-R-A-N-C-E. -E. Entrance. Push. It's too late. They're coming up. <sighs> Unless. Well, time flies, doesn't it? Quite often. Hold on, and I'll take you all down. Are you sure you can carry us all? We'll find out soon enough. Ready or not, here we go! I can't take another step. We can't stop now. Milo, look! Don't worry, Milo. We'll take over. The demons may not know it, but their names are numbered. Charge. C-H-A-R-G-E. Charge. Charge!
wisdom. And furthermore, let the boy known as Milo, the dog known as Ta, and the insect hereinafter referred to as Humbug, are hereby declared heroes of the realm. But I know we could have couldn't have done it without a lot of help. That may be true, but you had the courage to try. And what you can do is often matter what you will do. And that was why there was one very important thing we couldn't tell you until you returned. I remember. <laughs> what was it? Quite simple. It was impossible. Completely impossible. Does that mean that, oh, I need to sit down. But if we had told you before you had gone, you wouldn't have left. And, as you discovered, most things are possible just as long as you don't know they're impossible. I think I understand. I'm afraid it's time to go now. And you must say goodbye. To everyone? Can't you two come with me? Afraid not, old man. I've arranged for a lecture tour that will keep me busy for years to come. And they do need a watchdog around here. Oh, bah. We've all spent so much time together. I know I'm going to miss you. I know we would have rescued you a lot sooner if I hadn't made so many mistakes. You must never feel badly about making mistakes, Milo, as long as you take the time and trouble to learn from them. Very often you learn more by being right for the wrong reasons than you do by being wrong for the right ones. But there's so much to learn. Yes, that's true, but it's not just learning that's important, it's learning what to do with what you learn, and learning why you learn things that matters. I think I understand. At least I hope I do. Oh, well, goodbye. Goodbye. I'll be back someday, I will. Anyway, I'll try. Goodbye. And always remember, words, 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 and numbers. Now don't tell me. You uh, think the most words, 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 words. Is that so? Why, well, I'll have you know. depends on you. For some, it seems to last forever, and for others, just a moment. It's so full of things to do. Six o'clock already? In a moment, in a trice, before you even have time to blink. 